Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks podcast from the New Art School. Our guest today is Emmanuel Barbosa. Welcome, Emmanuel. Hello, Lefter. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to be here. So tell us about you and your work. Well, I'm a, I'm a graphic designer. I graduated in ESAD in Matosinhos, near Porto, in Portugal. Um, then I had a, a master's degree in Barcelona University, and I did my PhD in Valencia University. So about work, I, I've always worked, even since I, when I was a student, I already had a small studio with a colleague. And uh, we, we were always very, very keen in doing graphic work, looking at lots of information. And um, so I, I was always connected with graphic design. Even while I was a student, I was trying to do posters and book covers and this kind of stuff. After I finished my studies, I created my own studio. I, I worked with different companies. I worked with companies in Portugal, abroad. Um, and today I have my own studio. I, I'm also a, a design teacher at ESAD since uh, 98. And I also have lots of international cooperations with uh, design associations and because I created my own, my own association. Fantastic. So tell us more about, you know, any aspect of that or uh, we want to elaborate. Yes. Well, um, how, how did I got involved with associativism? Uh, while I was a student uh, in Portugal, we, we had just one uh, graphic design, one designer's association that was not working very well. So together with the colleague, uh, we founded... Um, a graphic designers association and uh, from there we started to try to help the the young students and the young designers to to promote themselves and to to create new opportunities and it didn't work uh, because after some times you know associations sometimes uh, can also create problems because we got in clash with other professional associations and i was very young so I quit that project, and uh, after that, I ended up creating a, a, an international association that uh, the, the main objective was to, to create bridges between Portugal and Asia, especially China. Uh, that was 10 years ago, and that association evolved to become the association that uh, we have now, that it's called Portuguese ACPT, Portuguese Cultural Association. And what we do is we, we create exchanges between Portuguese uh, cultural uh, projects, mainly very focused on, on, on design, architecture and creative industries. And we create uh, joint projects with, with other countries. Uh, we have done things with China, with Vietnam, now we are working with Thailand, uh, with uh, Croatia, so. That's wonderful. So you're, you're exchanging is on a student level? No, no, on ah. a professional level. Also, we also work with universities, but Fantastic. we are a completely independent project. We are not connected Fantastic. with any school or anything like that. Wonderful, wonderful. So what's the story? How did you get into teaching? <clears throat> Yes, well, um, I got invited by the school where I graduated at ESAD in Matosinhos. Um, I, I finished my studies in 92. Uh, yes, uh, I think we need to find a way. My solution, uh, which is not the, the best one, but what I've been doing, as I told you before, yeah. is I try to involve them trying to do something that they are not able to find elsewhere. So they need to, they need to come to the classes to be able to, to, to do these projects and to have yeah. these connections that otherwise they wouldn't. So some of them are very excited with that. And I think it works 
but a uh, few of them, they keep uh, diving, diving in that sea of information, you know, it's... Uh, right, right. So you're saying that the attention span yeah, is the greatest exactly. challenge for, for, for us educators. Yes, that's that's one of the things. And, and we need to find ways of managing that in some way. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my English. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. That's, that's fine. For you. Your English is very good. Uh, so yeah, so um, managing the attention span of students, f finding finding ways of managing the students' attention span. Yes. Yes, I think so. Mm. Mm. That's one of the main challenges. And what about access to, to things, access to equipment, access to uh, apprenticeships, you know, access to, uh, how about the students' access to various things that they need to, to, to improve uh, their, their, uh, their learning? Well, um, today about the access to information is, is very easy now. Yeah, sure, okay? sure, sure. That's sure. one thing. Then, in, at least in, in the SED, we always have uh, some parallel workshops and lectures and conferences, and we have uh, guest designers. Yeah. The school is very connected with the community, so we do lots of projects with uh, city halls mm -hmm. and with um, organizations. Mm. So um, they have access to information that uh, it's the same thing. How can I explain it to you? A um, few years ago, if we had, I don't know, Neville Brody or mm -hmm. David Carson coming to the school, the students, they, they were very excited about that. And they all go to the, to the conference and they all try to, to speak with them. Uh, today, it's not exactly like that, you know. Uh, mm. Few of them still go, of course, but uh, many of them, they go just because they are in the class and they need to go. But uh, if it's not during their class time, maybe they, they won't. So they have access to, to these um, to these fonts, but they don't really take advantage of them. Today, yeah. that's yeah. that's what I feel. So, uh, about equipments and about opportunities, we have workshops, we mm. have mm. all facilities in school, yeah. but very few students really use them 100%. That's what I feel. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, fantastic. I mean, I mean, uh, this is about sort of you're you're saying that this is more about motivation, yeah, and, and their yes. in motivating. Especially, students. yes, yes, yes. I think so. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to add? Anything, anything else you'd like to leave us with? Well, I think that um, it still is a very big challenge for me, uh, if not more. When I started to teach in 98, uh, of course, I was a young designer and I was very excited with the opportunity of teaching mm -hmm. and I was very involved. Now I'm not so much involved just in school because I have lots of other projects. Um, but I think it's a bigger challenge now because, uh, because of the attention spam of students and also because we are, we, we are completely um, immersed on, on information and it's very complicated to, to catch the, the attention of the students and being able to guide them, you know. Right. But what, would, what would your one message be to those students? Well, just try to find your own way because your way is different from the, your path. path will be different from the path of your mm. colleague because mm. each one of us is different. So mm. if you are, I don't know, a student from, from Portugal, and from, and, or if you are a student from, from China, of course, your cultural roots are, are very important to you and you should be able to use them to create your own way. And your yeah. expression should be a little bit different from another student with different cultural roots. And what I think that today we have lots of, uh, 
if I'm a young designer and I'm, I'm trying to do, I don't know, a poster about uh, a music band in Japan and uh, another one is doing the same in, in Ireland, uh, they all go to the same sources. They will go to Pinterest, they will go to Behance, they will go to Google, and they will, in the end, they will end up seeing exactly the same things. Um, so it's very normal that uh, a Japanese graphic designer does a very similar work to a Portuguese graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth to try to look at other things and look at your own uh, experience. In my case, in my case, it was motorcycles. Yeah. It looks a little bit stupid, but I found a lot of lots of information that later I, I, I included in my own graphic design work. You know? mm -hmm. So I think it's important for a design student to find their own inspirations and create his own path uh, by, by, by himself, not, yeah. not doing the same thing that the other people do. That's the easy way, but I don't think we should go by the, from that way. So they also need to go within themselves, right? You're saying yes. also we need to yes. go within themselves, yes. not just outside yes. and also exactly. possibly... That's the solution. Yeah. You know. Also possibly use books and other sources. It can be, it can be something else. It doesn't matter. You know, you can live in a small village and uh, you be, be a designer and a shepherd at the same time. And probably you will find it, your inspiration. It will be something completely different, not yeah. necessarily books, you know, but. Uh, no, I mean, you, you said about the internet. Like they need to use other sources for yes, research. Yes, exactly, exactly. I think so. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. Possible museums. Yes, yeah. yes. The experience. I think you you need to use your own experience, and yeah. your experience will create your your way. I think yeah. your, your experience can be a digital one. Uh, now we will have the the challenges of metaverse and this kind of stuff. But it can also be a very analogical one, you know, and very yeah. very traditional one. So each each person, each individual is different. So I think it's fr we can start working from there uh, as a designer, and you, we will find our own way. I used to show to students completely different uh, design approaches. Like I don't know, you have for one side is James Victor, or you have um, a completely. My own work is, is very. It's not very expressive. It's, it's a little. Uh, modernist inspired, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I like to show, that's the last thing I show to my student is my own work. Yeah. I don't think it's a good thing. I think they, they need to create their own uh, way and they, they should not try to do what the, they think the teacher will like. That's the last Absolutely. thing I want them to do. So I don't know. I'm a little bit confused, a confused person. So... <laughs> That's it. I don't know. That's very good. So how can our listeners find you if they want to get in touch? Uh, you can just, uh, just uh, Google my name, Emmanuel Barbosa. You can write ESAD. It's in the school where I teach or in yeah. LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. I have a very old website that I'm now trying to update. So it's not worth speaking Great. about that. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much and looking forward to seeing you on the design education forum we're doing this uh, May. Uh, yes. So we can do, yes. do many things. Okay. Right. Thank right. you, Manuel. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. All the best. Take care. Goodbye. Okay, Goodbye. Bye.